Hey, this is Tess. Microsoft released yet another exam around Power BI, the DP500 exam. Let's find out what this is all about. So, who is this exam for? It's for Power BI developers who want to further expand their skills using the dedicated Azure services, including Azure Synapse and Azure Purview. You have to think of the exam, eh? the PL300 exam is really focused around data visualization, building your reports. This one it's more to the data engineering side and making sure that you are aware of all the integrations that Power BI has to offer. So what skills are measured? Cleaning and transforming data, designing and building enterprise data models, incorporating advanced analytics, understanding how to give advice on data governance and also the role as a Power BI admin, monitoring data usage and optimized performance of data solutions. So why should you take another exam? You've already taken the PL300, the DOA100, why take another one? First reason is, well, this one goes really beyond building a report in Power BI Desktop. We learn about data lakes, about data governance and so on. The second reason is, of course, that certifications can help your uh, career advancement and the DP500 exam um, is, in my opinion, um, considered the more technical Power BI exam. Um, it's relatively new, so we'll have to wait and see how it evolves, but um, in the current state, I think you could say that. Third reason is understanding other data roles and allow for better collaboration because of the fact that it's between those two roles, between data engineering and the data analyst, um, you're just better um, able to understand the responsibilities of each role and that helps the collaboration and communication as a whole. Now the DP500 uh, exam starts of course with Azure Synapse and so you load your data or you connect your data into Azure Synapse and the studio environment and this is where the whole uh, story begins. The data can come from a data lake, eh? Azure uh, Data Lake uh, Generation 2, SQL Server, Data Factory and so on. Azure DevOps helps you uh, with the best practices that are associated uh, from development to production and then of course we have our visualization in Power BI. So you already see the integration between Power BI and Azure Synapse. Uh, so you can set up a linked service uh, to connect with those two. Within Power BI will also be tested um, on external development tools like Duck Studio and Tabular Editor. And of course, the data governance um, with Azure Purview comes into play. So you see like this variety of services um, that are also tested on the exam it goes beyond Power BI, beyond Power BI development. So general exam information, eh? what are the skills that are measured? Uh, you can see them displayed here. They are about the same weight. Um, it's important to know that the exam also requires a passing score of 70%. And it's uh, important that you always download the latest exam information because this changes uh, quite often. For resources, you can use YouTube, you can use the learning path uh, that Microsoft offers. So definitely check those out or you can uh, buy a test exam. All right, so let's actually take a look at what is required in terms of the skills that are measured. So this is the certification page, Azure Enterprise Data Analyst Associates. And you can see required exam just one, the DP500. Uh, two ways to prepare online with the learning pods and then the instructor led. Um, let's actually see what the required skills are. So skills measured. Let's see. Um, so we start govern and administer a data analytics environment. So this is all about Azure Purview understanding that's a relatively new service. Then we also integrate an analytics platform into an existing IT infrastructure. Um, yeah, so managing capacity, on-premise gateways, and so on. Of course, the integration between Azure Synapse Analytics and Power BI uh, will be re very relevant for the exam. Understanding Azure Studio, or Azure Synapse uh, Studio rather, um, and how that works into the web service. 
Azure SynApps Analytics uh, querying data using a T-SQL statement within the um, server environment also. Um, yeah, so recommending whether a serverless SQL pool or a dedicated pool is required. Um, that should be interesting. Um, and then also using a predict function within uh, the statement as well. Ingest and transform data by using Power BI. Um, bottlenecks, so this is all about performance and also best practices again, advanced editor. Implementing and managing data models. So when should you use direct query? Best practices again, uh, when it's a very large data set and in uh, some other cases, um, okay. Optimize enterprise scale data models. So this is all about the external tools, DAX Studio, Tabular Editor, and so on. And then we just have our uh, the things that we uh, most likely will be the most uh, aware of. So creating custom visuals, uh, creating report teams, importing uh, teams. Um, personalized visuals is also an interesting one that they've included. So yeah, a lot of uh, new things, for me at least. Uh, things that I'll have to uh, research a bit more. But um, I'll keep you updated on the process. And um, I think there will be some other videos explaining a bit more about the exam. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down below. And uh, good luck in advance. Alright, take care. Bye-bye.